You can approve in Zahara in a number of ways. First off, there is an approvers dashboard. Uh, and based on the role that you've been assigned by your administrator, if you are an approver, you should be able to log into Zahara and the tab here, approver, will have everything you need to do your approvals. So the number of approvals I've got waiting here are 43 and these are broken down into purchase orders, invoices and purchase requisitions. So a purchase order approval um, will be in the top section here. Um, and I've, my latest one is uh, 01464 for Adobe Systems. Now, if I wanted to, I could tick that and I could click approve. I wouldn't know much about it, though, would I? I, I wouldn't sort of be able to uh, see that uh, in any more detail without clicking into it. The other way of approving, which I'll quickly show you as well, is by email. So by default, for every single um purchase request, invoice request that is sent to you, it will come by email unless you turn it off. Um, and you will get an email like this and you can click approve or reject based on the information that you see here, or you can click review with detail. The review with detail is the same functionality that you would get from the actual approvals dashboard. So if I click 01464, I'm taken into the record in its entirety. So in my case here, I've got two line items. Uh, I can see the coding of those line items if it relates to a project. If there's a nominal code, I can see, you know, obviously the amounts. I can see the comments for the supplier. The internal comments need this for X project. Um, and I can see the history of where I've got to so far. So in this case, the order was created by Martin. Uh, it's a, you know, also uploaded a document as well, which I can get at by clicking the PDF. Uh, click, clicking the paperclip icon uh, and I can see it was sent to me as the approver um, uh, uh, you know, and the, the date timestamp. Now if I slide down further I can also see the budget so if a budget exists I can actually see it down here as well. So my job is to approve or reject. Um, now in this case I'm going to click approve and put all okay. Uh, I could click reject and there could be a preset amount of reasons that you have to choose from as well. So issue with the supplier, uh, or it could be uh, already ordered invoice, for example, and you can add extra text to that. So your job is to approve or reject. If you see any of the values up here that are highlighted, it means you, you either can code them or have to code them. So if you're uh, admins or finance people have set up that you need to put a project code in, it will be highlighted down here and you, you won't be able to do the approval without um, clicking into these boxes as well. In fact, in that situation, the approve and reject buttons will be removed from the email. If you see uh, an email like this, but with just the review with detail, it means you need to need to code the approval as well. So in my case, I'm going to approve it. I just click approve and it's done. So once we click approve, the document is processed. If we had done that from our email, in fact, if we tried to do that from our email now, it doesn't ask you to log in, but it should warn me. It would say that this this link is no longer valid. It's already been you know, used uh, or superseded. So if you want to approve from email, you absolutely can do. You can click approve or reject. And if you carry on watching, then we also have the mobile app as well where you can do approvals. The other way, the other thing that you've got, which uh, might be useful, um, is uh, we can, or your admins can set up to send you a daily reminder email, or what we call a digest email. It doesn't have to be daily, it could be weekly. They can specify how often it comes to you and at what time it comes to you. But effectively, all of the things that you uh, need to approve will be in one place. So it could be that you prefer to do it that way. Um, it could be that you want to set, um, set the approval email settings so it could be you disable immediate approval emails you can do that yourself um, but if that's the case make sure you're either using the mobile app or uh, you're getting your daily digest emails and remember as well that if you go on holiday you might need to set uh, a delegate so for example i could switch my uh, absence on and i could say that from tomorrow um, uh, i'm absent until a specific date or you know, until I uh, get back. And for this business of Rapid Systems Limited, then send all my approvals to Nick Headley Harper. So you you can set that as well under the question mark menu. You've got absence settings, you've got approval email settings as well. Um, and one final thing, remember your finance team do want you to take action 
quickly on these approvals or your buyers do and we rate you so down here there is a how you rate for the last 90 days so you don't want to be at the bottom of the table like me you want to be at the top of the table like Nick um, so take action promptly uh, be a superstar in terms of the eyes of the finance department um, and use the methods available email dashboard or the mobile app uh, to do the approvals as well okay so this is approvals on the mobile app uh, when you get to the approvals menu which you get to by clicking here and approvals you basically have approvals on orders or invoices and you have a a filter um, here uh, where it says click scan limited one you can switch into any other business units which have approvals waiting for you if you switch into invoices then all of the things that need approving under the invoices will be listed here as well so we show you straight away um, you know who the supplier is uh, what invoice number it is how much it's for when it came in that type of thing so if i was to click on um, abbey uk limited um, the banner goes green actually to tell you that it's actually uh, an invoice and not a purchase order which is blue we've got the date we've got the due date um, and we've got the um, project it belongs to if there's a corresponding order uh, which is sort of down here we can click that and we can have a look at the uh, any corresponding order like this if we want to go back we would click the uh, back arrow up here if we want to look at a line item we've got two line items down here we can just touch a line item and we'll go in and look at the line item as well um, so in this case we've got the coding if we are being asked to look at the coding um, then or change the coding those drop down lists would become live and we'll go be able to go back in and look at those and then if we slide up down at the bottom here we've got approve or reject buttons there and there that we can um, click into and same as actually if we're back at the home screen here we can actually just approve or reject by sliding either way here um, and if we're looking at orders then if we go into an order uh, then we've got exactly the same thing we can slide down see the approve or reject buttons if a budget exists down here you can click on view budget and it will all display the budget as well if there's any corresponding documents you'll be able to get at them as well and then the icon up here is the history so if you click at that you'll see when the order was created um, and when it was um, uh, you, you basically, basically you'll be able to see the history of the, the purchase or the history of the invoice as well so the idea with the mobile app is we show you as much information as you need to see um, and you know line item wise you can page through them but ultimately when you're ready to approve again you just click the approve button or you click the reject button and then you put your comments in and off it goes and it's as simple as that um, so yeah i hope that's useful thank you very much